All right, let's talk about how to add gradients without using texture painting. Essentially how to add gradients procedurally, like I've done with this ground here. If you look at this smaller island on this scene I'm working on, you'll see that in addition to this cell shader, there's also a gradient that's going from the base to the top of the mesh. This gradient is actually being affected by height. So the higher this mesh is, the lighter this gradient would go. I really like this effect. I've added this effect on the large island as well, and this is a useful trick. So I'm going to show you guys how you can do this yourselves. And yeah, like I said, this is procedural. All of this is procedural. Um, the detailing on the larger island is clearly painted, but this smaller island, the one I'll be focusing on right now, is 100% procedurally generated. There's no image textures or any kind of painting connected to it. So what's going on with this shader here? We've got essentially a basic cell shader, um, the traditional EV way, a shader, map to shader to RGB, use that in a color ramp set to constant, gives you this nice um, two-tone kind of shader. And if you want, you can always add more. I personally like doing two tones. Sometimes I'll add a mid-tone, but that just looks pretty clean. It gives really nice defined shadows. This cell shader here is being coupled with this height gradient. And I'm gonna come back to how this is working in a second, but I did just wanna show you what's happening here. So what I'm doing is I'm adding this height gradient to the white part of this color ramp. And I'm doing that with a, an AND operator. I have a, another video showing how you can use nodes to make an AND operator. And that's exactly what I'm doing here is I'm separating this color ramp by hue, saturation, and value. And then I'm taking the saturation and I'm looking to see if it falls within the range of greater than 0.1 and less than 1. And if this is true, uh, remember again, if you want to measure and, you set it to minimum so that it will take the smallest of the two values. So that way if it's getting a 0 and a 1, it'll take the 0 and it'll only register as 1 if it's receiving a 1 on both inputs, which is what AND means. So yeah, we've got this AND operator here and it's taking this white part, like I said, and converting it to this color ramp down here. And you can see, if I move this, you can see it's just changing where that shadow line is and that white part is being converted to something else. It's going to put that back the way it was. All right, let's take a look at this height gradient because this is probably the most important part of all this. So it's actually a fairly simple setup. You take the texture coordinates of the object and you put them in the mapping node. Uh, set the type to texture. I'll come back to these numbers in a minute. And then you map that into a gradient texture, a linear gradient texture. You cube the result of this gradient texture. And then you factor it into a color ramp. And obviously that's just being mixed using the value from the AND operator into the material output. So let's take a look at these more odd technical numbers here. And by the way, when I say technical numbers, these are 100% trial and error. And also, I wouldn't recommend just blindly following these numbers because it'll probably be different for you. For example, the rotation. Uh, rotation for this case, let me set the gradient going from bottom to top of the island with the Y being set to 90. But I've had other meshes I've worked with where setting X to 90 would do that, or setting Z to 90, or negative, like... I don't honestly know how rotation works with the mapping node all the time, because a lot of the time it seems a bit arbitrary, but whatever the case may be, Y worked for me, something else will probably work for you. Scale. So you can ignore that Z scale, it's not doing anything. Um, obviously textures are two-dimensional, so that Z scale isn't affecting it in any way. What is affecting it is this X scale. And just so that we can better see what's going on here, I'm going to take this value before it's color ramped and set it to the material output so that we can really um, play around with this and understand what's happening. So this X scale will allow you to 
essentially shrink or stretch as well as move um, where that value falls, where that gradient is being essentially projected onto that mesh. Um, I personally like it about there-ish. I think I had it at three point, no, I had it at 3.0. Again, in this use case, three works out pretty well. And if you look at it from the side view like this, you can see it's a really, really nice um, effect going from white to not quite black. If I were to make this a little bit taller, you could see that as I did, it would turn all the way to black. But for this particular mesh, obviously that wasn't what I was going for, and having a little bit of that grayscale, I think is a nice touch. Also, by changing the Z location, uh, 3.9, I'm gonna remember that, because I'll probably forget. If you move this, you can also change the, essentially the vertical position of the gradient. It, essentially what you're doing is you're changing the midpoint. So you can say, do I want it to be mostly white with just a tiny bit of gray? Do I want it to be mostly gray with just a tiny bit of um, light lightning around the edges? In this case, I want an effect going all the way up, so I'm just going to put it back to 3.9. Uh, there's another thing of interest here um, that I'm cubing these values. You'll see that I've got the power set to 3, and I'm cubing every value that's coming out of this ramp. Let me just, or out of this gradient texture. Let me just make sure that I am connected right, yeah. The last time I tried to record this video, I got stuck because I didn't realize I'd set the gradient texture to the material output instead of this, and no matter what I changed here, it wasn't changing this at all. It was not my proudest moment, so I'm glad I haven't done that to myself again. Anyway, so I'm just going to set this to, um, let's go with zero for now, and obviously a number multiplied by itself zero times will be zero, so that's going to give pure white. Now as we start going up, you'll see that we're starting to bring in that grayscale again, but it's not until we get to the higher values that you really start to see that grayscale. Essentially what this is doing is it is increasing the contrast of the gradient, um, and I've personally found that you very rarely need to go any higher than six. Uh, somewhere between two and six seems to be perfect. I would recommend just using whole numbers um, just to save calculation time. Powers are always best as whole numbers. But yeah, regardless, that's just a way that you can affect the contrast of this. And if you wanted to see what it looked like um, without any of that contrast, let me just do that just send this gradient texture over the material output and you can see that it's just a little bland for lack of a better word not really what I was going for in this case and so I used that cubing to make sure that it had that level of contrast anyway let's put that back perfect so yeah there's our color ramp again now you can see that um, I mean, I just, it just looks nice. I, I don't know how else to say, it just really does look nice. Um, you can also, of course, um, do that, have a light to dark. It's very simply just by flipping the color ramp. You could add more stops, you could, you could do any number of things. It's just a, a good basic technique for adding a little bit of variance to a shader like this. And again, let me just show you this scene as a whole so you can better see what I'm talking about. So again, I painted some details on, but the base shader on both of these land masses is the same. It's just this cell shader with sharp shadows being mixed into this gradient. And in my personal opinion, I think it looks really good. I think this is a pretty useful effect to have in your toolbox. But yeah, that's about it. I'll definitely have more to say about this particular scene in other videos, but for now, I guess I'll just say thanks for watching.